Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris, aka Barnon 11970, and as always, I thank you guys for watching this video. All right, um, we're going to talk about the United States of America, and the reason I'm only talking about this country is this is the country that I live in, so this is where I can get all of my knowledge, so I am not familiar with other countries and how they were founded and where they are. Pretty much assured, it's probably very similar, so please do your research and talk about your countries and educate your people. Um, there is two different versions of this country. One that you are taught in school, and one you are not taught in school. So let's go over some basic things which are provable. You can research these things and look them up. So show this video to somebody who says they don't believe in this stuff. Because it's backed with proof and verifiable proof. So let's talk about this title of this video, The Duality of America. Well, there are two different Americas. Again, the one that you're taught, and the one that's the reality that we live today. So let's go over a couple of examples of this. So we have two countries here. One fake and one real. The original was called the United States of America. The fake one, which was created in 1871, under the Act of 1871, is in all capital letters called the United States. That is not the country that you think it is. It is a corporation located in Washington, D.C. that was created in the Act of 1871. So please look that up. So even though the United States of America and the United States sounds very similar and looks very similar, they're not the same things. So with that being said, and when so many people say we have to have our constitutional rights, I understand where people are coming from, but if you don't know that there are actually two constitutions, well, be careful what you wish for, you may get it. Because the original constitution, which was created in 1789, was the constitutions for the people of the United States of America, or the United States with just a capital U and a capital S. They're talking about the country. That was created, again, in 1789. The corporate country known as the United States has its own constitution as well. That was created, again, in the Act of 1871. was starting to ratify in the 1864, I believe is the exact one, started creating the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. So again, this is verifiable. So when people these days ask for their constitutional rights, well, because they don't know that there are two constitutions, they're basically asking to be slaves of a corporation that they don't know about. So again, verifiable. We have two flags in this country. Now you notice this flag. This is the original flag. That was the one that was created in the beginning. Now, of course, it had less stars. The stars were representative of the states, so it increased as we increased our states. The new the new has a gold trim on three sides. Here, here, and here. The way you can verify that is if you look up Executive Order 10834, which was created August 21st, 1959. They actually state that the gold trim on the flag is not the United States of America flag. It is a admiralty flag, a military flag. So there's your proof to find that and also prove that the gold trim is not what you think it is. You'll notice, you'll see that in all courts. You'll notice when the president speaks, they'll have that flag. They're trying to tell you what country they represent. So with that being said, we have two laws. Well, the original Constitution, which was, um, again, the Constitution for the United States, which meant it was for the people, they had common law, which is law of the land. That was the sovereignty law, where people decided what they can and cannot do, as long as they didn't infringe on the rights of other people. Nowadays, under that golden fringed flag, we have what's called admiralty law, which is law of the sea. Now, I know people will say things like, well, we live on land, we don't live on the ocean, so how does that apply? Well, there's a saying that says, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So, 
for a law to be effective, it doesn't always have to be in the literal sense. So it doesn't matter if you believe or don't believe. Fact is fact. So what I would recommend is start looking up admiralty law, and you will see that they even talk about that in the Constitution, proving that admiralty law is the law of this land. We have two types of Americans. The original were the people. They were sovereign people, free to roam the land. Again, as long as you don't infringe on the rights of others. What we have now are persons and citizens. Person is a corporation, a non-fictional entity, part of a corporation. You'll notice that because it's in all capital letters. Citizen, and this is how they've tricked people into going into this new constitution, a citizen is a person that's born and na or born or nationalized in the United States, not the United States of America, the country, the United States, the corporation. And the second part of being a citizen is that you are subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. So you're, the Constitution, the reason that it is in effect is because it's the consent of the governed. We are the governed. Consenting means the reason that the, it works is because we're allowing it to work. Now, there are two ways to allow something to work in law. You can agree with it. Or you can say nothing. In other words, you're not arguing it. That is what they think about when it comes to silence as far as law is concerned. Because if a person is being silent, they're saying, okay, they're not arguing it. So in 1871, they created a corporation known as the United States. They changed the, the individual sovereign man or woman from the people to a person and a citizen. What that did was it tricked them into becoming part of a corporation known as the United States. And because you did not know that, because they own the public schools, they own the politicians, because they all get paid lots of money to keep silent, you were never told this. So because the fact they lied to you and misled you and deceived you, and you didn't know that they did this, because obviously this is our grandparents' grandparents that had to deal with this, a lot harder to get information back then. Well, their silence in law meant that they agreed with something they didn't even know about. So think about the fact that since 1871, and actually since the mid-1860s, because that's when it originally started, your father's father's father was dealing with the fact that they were living a lie that they didn't know about. And in law, you can either agree with something or you could say nothing. And again, ignorance is no excuse of the law. So when people ask for their civil rights, their civil liberties, when the people march in the streets saying, you know, you have to honor this constitution, that's what they're giving you. Because you didn't look, and you didn't research, and you didn't know that the constitution was abandoned in 1871. The country was abandoned in 1871. They overthrew the government and created a corporation that looks the same. This flag looks very similar to the one that has the gold trim. The United States of America looks pretty much the same as the United States. And they changed for the people to of the people, which meant it went from the original document that was subservient to the people to the new document where the people are subservient to the document. So we went from sovereign free people who had rights to citizens who are slaves of a corporation that have privileges. That's why you need things like licenses. That's how they can tell you you can and cannot own a gun. That's how they can throw you in jail for a small infraction. We consent to it through our silence. So once you learn that you are consenting through your silence, through your ignorance, which is not our fault because we weren't taught this, once we all decide, or at least the majority of us decide, we no longer consent to this fake constitution that they tricked you into believing is what happened in 1789, which our forefathers fought and died for. Well, we'll get our original country back, and we'll have a lot more freedoms. That's up to you guys. Once you know the information, if you choose to do nothing, you have no right to complain. 
And like I said in the beginning of this video, be careful what you wish for. You may get it. So the next time you go and protest and you say, I want my civil liberties and I want you to follow the Constitution, they'll give you exactly what you're asking for. Because if you look up in the 13th Amendment, the definition of the word slavery, they define it in a sneaky way. It is called involuntary servitude. And notice they just didn't say that slavery is when somebody forces you to do something no matter how it's done. But involuntary means that if you are volunteering your servitude, then under the definition, you're not considered a slave. So since they tricked you into following a fake constitution, and you did not study it yourself because you're too distracted by, you know, people twerking and Super Bowl shuffles or whatever's going on in the world, in the entertainment world. It's not their fault that you didn't know this. It's called hidden in plain sight. So now that you know, what are you planning on doing about it? All you have to do is simply walk away. It is that simple. But are you willing to do that? I guess we'll find out. I hope if you appreciate this video, you'll give it a thumbs up. You'll share it. You'll make your own. You'll help get the message out. Watch this with somebody who sits there and says, I don't believe in this stuff. Well, I gave several examples of where you can find this information and prove. So believe it or not believe it. It doesn't change what it is. And this is why the politicians get away with what they get away with and how we're the ones always footing the bill and paying the ultimate price. How long do you want to have that happen until they take more freedoms away because they're your privileges, not your rights? Under the latest constitution, that's exactly what they have the right to do. You don't own anything. They're just allowing you to have it. Just think of a, a slave. Slave is wearing clothes because the master allowed them to wear it. They don't own it. They're just using it. So everything that you think you worked so hard for, your fancy car, your nice house, your children, you don't own them. You're just doing the work so the real masters don't have to pay for it all. And they can take them away at any time they want. Don't think that's possible? Don't pay your taxes. See how quick they go into your bank account. Don't um, give your children indoctrinated uh, pills, it's pills, medicines, poisons, toxins, flu shots. And watch how fast Child Protective Services will take your child. And you'll sit there and say, that's my child. Well, if you knew about the law, when you signed that certificate of live birth and you didn't claim the DNA, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my 49-minute video, which you'll see on the bottom of the screen come up in the last 15 seconds. Because of admiralty law, because you signed a document that you didn't understand, you actually gave the rights away to your child, power of attorney, to a corporation. They're just allowing you to raise them and pay all the bills to get that child up to the working stage so they can make money off them. Think about that when you look at your child. All right, truth hurts. I'm so, I hope you don't hate the messenger because that's all I am, trying to help you awaken so it doesn't happen again and again and again like it's happened for over the past 120 years. Thanks for watching. Peace.